Locate the zip file that you downloaded from the internet or received off CD. Double click the zip file. From the file menu, choose Extract All. The wizard will appear. Click Next, then click Browse. We'll create a new folder for the contents of MusicEd. Click My Documents, and then choose Make New Folder. We'll call ours MusicEd Font. Now, we'll click OK. Then, let's choose Next, and the files will extract to our new folder. Now we see the contents of the MusicEd zip file with the MusicEd fonts represented by the O icons. To install them, we'll go to Start, Control Panel. Here we see the control panels in Category View. We'll switch to Classic View. Now, we'll choose Font, and the Fonts window opens. Let's go to the taskbar and choose the MusicEd folder. We'll reduce the size of the folder so that we can drop the fonts into the font window. Click the first font, hold Shift, and then click the last font. Once all the fonts are highlighted, drag them into the fonts folder. The fonts are now installed. To install MusicEd on Mac OS X, let's locate the MusicEd folder that's been downloaded from the internet. It's on the desktop. Upon clicking it, we see the MusicEd font files. We'll need the Fontbook application, so we'll go to our hard drive and choose Applications, and look for Fontbook. The Fontbook application is responsible for the installation of fonts on OS X. After the fonts have been loaded, we'll go to File, Add Font. Now we'll go to Desktop, Use Add, and click all of the MusicEd fonts. They're TrueType files, so they'll have the TTF extension. Then we'll choose Open. Now if we scroll the list, we'll find MusicEd and MusicEd Rhythm Sticks have been installed. Because of the way that Mac OS X handles fonts, however, we have to do an extra step. We'll highlight both MusicEd and MusicEd Rhythm Sticks and choose to disable them. Once they've been disabled, we'll close the Fontbook application. Then we'll start it back up again. We'll scroll the list and find MusicEd and MusicEd Rhythm Sticks. Now we'll enable the fonts. Once they've been enabled, we'll quit Fontbook and then restart the computer. After the computer has been restarted, the font should be ready to use in any application. To demonstrate the rhythmic portion of the MusicEd font, we'll use Microsoft Word. The concepts learned here can be carried over to any of the applications you wish to use MusicEd in. In Microsoft Word, I'll load Times New Roman and type a few characters. What looks like nonsense will be turned into music with the MusicEd font. We'll highlight the text and from the Format menu choose Font and then choose MusicEd from the drop-down. 
Now we see that those characters have turned into music with the music add font. This is to demonstrate that each of the characters is mapped to a specific note, hand sign, or keyboard marking using music add. This time, let's actually type the music with music add loaded. Notice music add is chosen from the font menu. We'll start typing. On a new line, we'll type new rhythms. Notice how the rhythms are aligned using music add. We have eighths and quarters perfectly spaced out. This is one of the benefits of using music add, is that you don't have to use music notation software to get simple rhythms. Here's how the music add font works. The top number row of the keyboard is used for time signatures. To get the top number of the time signature, simply type the number on the number row that you wish. So if you wanted a 4 for 4-4, four, four, you would simply hit the number 4. For the bottom number, you hold Shift plus the number you want. So if you wanted 4-4, four, four, you would hold Shift 4, which in actuality would give you the dollar sign. Let's try it again. To get 2-4, we'll hit the number 2, then we'll hold Shift and the number 4. If we wanted 4-8, we would hold 4 and then Shift and the number 8. The bottom numbers that are allowed within Music Ed are 2, 4, 8, and 16. To get 16, you hold shift and the tilde. Note values are also used within music ed for the bottom number. To do this, we'll type 4 for the top number and then shift 5 for a quarter note. The note values are located surrounding their numerical counterparts. So 2, and if we wanted 2-2, two, two, we would hold Shift and 3. Consult the character map for specific mappings of numbers and numerical values for time signatures. To type rhythms with the music add font, you use lowercase letters for notes and uppercase letters for rests. For instance, if we wanted a quarter note, we would type lowercase q, and for a quarter rest, uppercase q. Now, the half note is mapped to the w key, so lowercase w, uppercase w. As well, we can click lowercase e and uppercase e for a whole and whole rest. The notes for the music add font are mapped out ergonomically on the keyboard so that all of the basic note values are located to the left of the keyboard. Q for quarter, W for half, E for whole, then A for a flagged eighth note, and Z for a flagged sixteenth. About eighths and sixteenths. To create beamed groupings, we'll hit S to start the beam of an eighth note. And we'll continue to hit S to continue the beam as long as we desire. To close the beam, we'll hit D. The same rule applies for sixteenth notes. X will start the beam groupings. C will end the beam groupings. We'll use Times New Roman to see what this looks like in characters. To create a mixed rhythm with beams, for instance, eighth and two sixteenths, we'll use an, a, an S to start the eighth group, then an X to start the sixteenth group, and a C to end the sixteenth groups. Likewise, if we wanted two sixteenths and an eighth, that would be X, C, 
and then D because D would be ending the grouping. Notice how the rhythms are lined up on multiple lines using the music add font. This is helpful because this means that simple rhythms can be written without music notation software. If you hit shift plus a beam grouping, you'll get a rest contained within the beam. So S, shift S, and D gives a rest nested within an eighth note grouping. Let's type out a full rhythm with a time signature. We'll hit 4, Shift 4, Q, W, Q. Now the backslash will give us a bar line. Then we'll type Q, Q, Shift W. Shift and the backslash gives us a double bar at the end. We'll hit Enter. Then type 4, Shift 4 to get 4, 4. Let's write a duo. Now we'll type S, D, S, D, Shift A to get an eighth rest, A to get a flagged eighth, and repeat Shift A, flagged A, or regular A. Now we'll type backslash to get a bar line, and then we'll type sixteenths. X, 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 C, X, 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 C. To get a dotted quarter, we'll type R. And then a flagged eighth is A. To end it, shift backslash or the bar key. To write ties using Music Ed, you'll use the italics version of Music Ed. So, if I hit italic and type Q, I get a quarter with a tie. If I hit A, I'll get an eighth note with a tie. And likewise, if I hit W, I'll get a half note with a tie. To create notes with accents, I'll use the bold version of Music Ed. So, with bold selected, I'll hit Q for quarter, A for eighth note, and W for half, and you see that I get notes with accents. Logically, if I hit bold and italic at the same time, then I'll get ties and accents on notes. A word about ties. When you want to tie over a bar line, it's a little tricky. You see that if I type Q and the bar key, the bar line appears after the tie. To tie over a bar line, You'll make sure italics is pressed, and you'll type shift plus the rhythm that you want. So shift Q will give me a quarter with a bar line. This way, bar lines will draw accurately over the ties. So shift W with italics would give me a half that ties over a bar line. Here, I'll write out a rhythm using mixed versions of the music ad font. I'll type S, 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 D. That gives me an eighth note grouping. Now, I'll do it again, but this time I'll tie over a bar line with the last eighth note group. So I'll hit italic and do shift D. Now, I'll disable italic because I don't want any more ties and type Q, Q. Then I'll hit italic and bold to get an accented half note, which ties over a bar line. And I've hit W. Let's create hand signs with music ed. We'll hit Y to get Do. U will give us Re. I will give us Mi. And as we go to the left, we get the rest of the diatonic solfege. Let's create a keyboard diagram using Music Ed. We'll hit J to get a leftmost key. Then the apostrophe key gives us a black key. K gives us a middle key, apostrophe. And L gives us a rightmost key. Now we'll hit J, 
apostrophe k apostrophe k apostrophe l if you want to use a dot on a key you'll hold shift plus the key so shift j apostrophe k apostrophe shift l j apostrophe shift k apostrophe k apostrophe L. We'll use Times New Roman to look at the keys without the characters. When using Music Ed with a program that has spell and grammar check functionality, it's a good idea to turn off spell and grammar check so that Music Ed can function properly. We'll demonstrate this using Microsoft Word. The concepts can carry over to other programs as well. From the Format menu, we'll create a new style that's specifically set for the Music Ed font. We'll go to Format, Styles and Formatting. At the right, the formatting pane has opened. We'll choose New Style. We'll give the style name Music Ed. Under Formatting, we'll choose the font Music Ed. Let's give it a size of 36. And finally, the most important feature. We'll go down to the bottom left and choose Format. From this drop-down, we'll choose Language. We'll mark the selected text as English. And we'll be sure to check the box which says Do not check spelling or grammar. Choose OK and OK. Now, to use Music Ed, from the Styles and Formatting pane, we'll choose the Music Ed style. We see that in the main window, the font is changed. Now we'll type our characters. Notice that the green and red lines, which indicate spelling and grammar errors, no longer appear. This also lets us use the punctuation keys freely, such as T, which is the right bracket key, and T, which is shift and the right bracket key.